it's it's like it's it's like a gray area. It's like you know they treated me like I didn't have a dis a disability, but and then then they started to go into disregarding that I have a, disregarding that I have a disability altogether, you know, in the sense that like you know my pain is isn't that real or like you know it's like you're strong, you're doing this, you'll get past this. So that that part, it's like yeah, but I would say this too. I don't think like pretty much. Like I didn't know much about my disability until now, until adulthood, because it's like my family didn't know too much about my disability. One time, I told my mother, like my mother told me, she said, "Chad's get in here um, and do these dishes." And I told my mother, <laughs> I told my mother, um, she, I said, "Mommy, I can't do the dishes." She's like, "Why you can't do the dishes?" I'm like, "Like, mom, I'm handicapped." My mother looked at me. She said, "Who the fuck told you you handicapped?" <laughs> And it was like, it was like, um, and I think that was the first time like somebody brought like my disability to my attention as a child. And it was like a teacher. I think she had told me like, you know, um, that I was handicapped or something. So my mother said, well, you, <laughs> you better get your ass in there and do them damn dishes. So I'm like, some damn handicapped. <laughs> yeah. Like people often say like, you know, you're an inspiration to me and everything. Sometimes, like people, like people with disability, I know some people with cerebral palsy don't, don't like to be referred as being like an inspira inspiration. I don't know why. I think it's because like most of the time we just want to be seen like as uh, everybody else. But like, like not not being called an inspiration is not necessarily the thing. But like doing um like a simple like task like going to the gym and somebody saying like, oh man, that must be hard. You're such an inspiration. You know, like. And it almost feels like it's like a sarcastic remark. It's like anything we do is like, like thing. It's like, and they say this thing like, "Oh, we're not here to be an inspiration porn." So I think sometimes it's like the overuse of it. But, um, but it's like I know most people don't don't really know understand. But you know, they just see it and like, "Wow, you do something that I take for granted." So for therefore, you're inspiration. So I understand where it comes from, but I also understand where some people with disabilities feel about them being like called an inspiration constantly or being referred as anything they do as an inspiration. How do you feel about that though? When people say that to you, cerebral palsy is the leading cause of childhood disabilities in the United States. On this episode of The Chris David Show, Chaz Bedford, a photographer living with cerebral palsy, shares how he's using it to empower others living with the disorder. Chaz Bedford is a self-proclaimed cerebral palsy warrior, or CP warrior for short. Chaz is here to share his journey to becoming a photographer and how he overcame the many hurdles of growing up in the inner city with a disability. Everyone, give a warm Chris David Show welcome to Mr. Chaz Bedford. No, oh, no. Welcome, Chaz. Thank you for coming on. Uh, thank you for having me, Chris. Listen, man, I'm, I'm Chaz. I'm glad you're here. And, and I, I got to take a moment, though. I got to tell everyone uh about the message you sent me because when i hit you up you sent me like back one of the most kindest sincere messages and and i have to acknowledge you for that so thank you for that i appreciate that oh, no problem no problem at all and 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 for that reason for that reason i'm not going to probe you like i normally do <laughs> all right not going to probe right. you but I just really, I just want you to share your story. Like that's, that's why I, I wanted you on and, and um, what I want you to share with the people, you know what I'm saying? So start from the beginning. Um, where'd you grow up? Me, I was born and raised in Harlem, New York. I was born in Harlem Hospital. So I lived like anywhere from 142nd and Lenox. And then I grew up in Wagner Projects. So pretty much most of my childhood was in Harlem and then somewhere along the line I grew up in Queens and pretty much I lived in every borough except for Brooklyn where I live now. <laughs> you might know the M15 bus. 
So when I was a kid, I, um, they gave my mother like this this stroller, but it was like, it was weird. It was like a stroller, but it looked like, it was like a wheelchair, but it was a stroller. I don't know, totally weird thing. And then, um, so one day it was hot outside. So, you know, back in the nineties when the bus had that, that ramp that had to come down and then everybody had to move from the back of the bus. So my mother didn't feel like, like folding up my chair and having me go to, um, having me uh, walk up to the ramp and get through all that crowd of people. So she was like, let's just get on the ramp. So she was telling me like, you know, she said, Chaz, she said, sit your ass still, sit your ass still. So she was making it seem to the bus driver and everybody else on the bus that I could walk, that I was wheelchair bound. So bad, (laughs) so bad. But me, I was always an active kid. So it was like, I'm like, so I always like running to the front and putting the Metro card in the bus. I always like putting the Metro card in the, the thing. So my mother's like, we going up the ramp, we going up the ramp. The bus driver buckled me down. Everybody aggravated on the bus because it's a hot ass day in Harlem. And then like some people had to get off the bus and stuff and wait for me to get strapped in and stuff. So we got settled and I'm still jumping. My mother's like digging out her purse to get the Metro card. So I'm like, my mom, and so she she speaking on her teeth, like, sit your ass down. Like, like, hey, ass up. So people start looking. And then I remember snatching the Metro car out her hand, unbuckling my the, the thing from the stroller, hop out the chair, run to the front, and put the Metro car in. The bus driver looked at me like, because he was sweating, strapping me in. And then everybody at the bus looked at me, looked at my mother. And my mother got so nervous, she didn't know what to do. She was just like, it's a miracle. <laughs> I was like, what? When she told me that story, I said, oh. she's like, it's no. a miracle. She was so embarrassed, she didn't know what to do. And then when I was walking back to my chair, everybody in the thing was looking at me like, Dell, that, I mean, she told me that story, I said, I tell that story to everybody. That was like, you can't even make that up. That is hilarious. That's you can't miracle. even make that up. It's Yo, how, does she, how does she say it? Like, imitate your mom. Like, how does she sound? Do do your mom. Huh? She was just like, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. <laughs> like, girl. Uh, <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, oh my that's God. That's hilarious, man. That yeah. Is, that is. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Shout I know. Out, listen, shout out to your mom. That's hilarious. I hope your mom watched this. I oh hope God, you tell I hope her she about this. She too. watches. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hope she watches. This is that's yeah. yo, mama, me, uh, was... Chaz, mom, you, you're hilarious. That's <laughs> that's funny. That's a good yeah. one. She told me too as a kid, like it was very hard to get like um, it was very difficult like getting services and things that I need and stuff and right. Like just medical services and like assistive devices and anything that I needed as a child because she said like um she would take me to these doctors' office and she would be like oh my son has like you know cerebral palsy and then here goes here go my ass jumping on furniture running around and everything and then they, <laughs> the lady I remember the lady looked at my mother one time she was like um Miss Miller she's like um nothing ain't nothing wrong with your son she's like no oh, i told you my son has real palsy and she's like look at him and like, Shut your ass down. <laughs> so that's one thing i would say that, that's what i always say like i never noticed that i had a disability as a kid because it's like i was so active and no two people with cerebral palsy is the same like even the people with the same type of cerebral palsy as, as me we're all we're all different well, we're all different, and it's like you know, some people with cerebral palsy, they they start walking probably at the age five or six. Me, I know I didn't start walking to the age of three. Oh yeah, and I was just out of everything. I've had two different types of stories about that. My godparents say I started work, walking because I heard a thunder strike, and they said I didn't start walking. I just got up and ran. They said I didn't even learn to walk out of the train. My father and my mother, they said they was, I think, arguing in a park in Harlem. It was a park across the street from where we lived in Harlem. And they said they was talking or arguing, I don't know. But they said um they was 
too busy running name out. They said I got my ass up and started walking, and then I was head first coming down the slide. And then my mother like, "Oh my god, my baby!" <laughs> I don't know. I think as a mother, as a parent, I don't know. I try to put myself in their perspective. Like, you know, you just want your child to be like, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's hard for a parent to accept like when your child is like disabled or probably different from other people I would say but you know so I think that's why she she wanted me to have this surgery so I can have a better quality of life I guess in her opinion but me I told I, t I think she said at a young age I told her I said listen God made me this way I'm gonna stay this way because <laughs> I was like as a kid I'm like even now as an adult we still go back and forth about it because she wanted me to have this surgery and I'm like no you know surgery is a risk too and like even doctors some doctors will like fight against that they like they're like you're really like your body compensated you know compensated well like why would you like I'm not gonna have surgery just because and then a lot of people that have that surgery sometimes they have back pain more severe back pain for the rest of their life and I think too as growing up too especially being um person of color with a disability, I think we're not really open to like the resources and like we don't get that much information like we're supposed to, or, you know. But I would say this, as a kid, I did go to a school called um, United Cerebral Palsy. And I wanna shout out to them because there I remember as a child that I, they did teach me a lot. Like they really worked with me as they knew, they knew I, th I believe in my heart that they knew what type of cerebral palsy I had and they knew how to work with me. They knew how to get my body to function and move. They taught, um, I remember they did me, um, they taught me how to tie my shoes. I, I knew how to tie my shoes at um, six years old, I believe. Um, yeah. What, what form of cerebral palsy? Cause I was doing some research and I found out that there are different yes. forms of cerebral palsy. So what form do you have and, and how does it affect your motor skills? Yes, the type of cerebral palsy I had, I have right now, um, I currently just learned about it in high school. Um, it's called left hemiplegic cerebral palsy, which means um, I'm partially paralyzed on the left side of my body due to brain damage on the right side of my brain. So the brain damage that was done to, that I was born with, that was done to my right side of the brain affect uh, my motor skills and function of the left side of my body. So let me get this right. Damage to the right side affects the left side. So would that mean yes. that damage to the left side would affect the right side? That's correct, and that's and and people with cerebral palsy that have that type of cerebral palsy is called right hemiplegic cerebral palsy. Interesting. So I know it's it's crazy. No, but this is listen. This is why I have you on because this this show, like I mean, we have fun and we goof off, and and you know I dick around a little bit, but this is educational also, and I want to be informative, and I want people to understand you know, exactly, you know, what this, this the, what your disorder is, a disability, and what you deal with, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. I want people to understand that. So um, tell me about the struggles that you face having a disability. Well, the struggle that I face really most, of, most throughout my life is that people who see me, they notice that something's wrong with me because I walk with a limp, but they don't necessarily believe that I have a um, disability. So they think that, um, you know, probably the first thing that would probably come to mind is, did he get hit by a car or something like that? <laughs> like, pretty much. And then, like, like, I've been, like, struggling with, like, transportation and this, um, you know, I took, I took the subway most of my life and Public transportation, that was one of the things that was really difficult for me. Um, simple tasks like walking around up and down the stairs, sometimes that can be a challenge for me. For me, um, I'm able to walk up and down the stairs without holding onto the rail, but most of cerebral palsy affects my balance. So there, there's been times in my life that uh, I tripped and fell in the street or like 
I would just trip over my two feet sometimes. And then, and sometimes it's like with cerebral palsy, people don't talk about this enough, is that you have to learn every time you wake up is basically you're teaching yourself how to walk again. Like we, uh, people with cerebral palsy, most of us don't have muscle memory. So a lot of it is like every time I walk, like if I get up and wake up in the morning and I walk, it's like reteaching myself how to walk again. If that makes sense. Wow. No, it, 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 it does make sense. I mean, it makes sense, you know, as much as from the standpoint that I can understand it as someone who doesn't have the disorder and I'm sure other people, but you know, it, it sounds almost as if it, it's like when someone has an accident or like, let's say like a yeah. stroke or something, and then they have to relearn how to walk and how to do different things with their mobility. You know, that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, um, that's yeah, okay. and it spits out. The, I don't mean to cut you off, but speaking no, of no, 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 I was done. <laughs> you go. I learned recently that you know um, people with cerebral palsy are two times more likely to have a stroke as we like you know get older, and even though like um, it's a chronic like they call it a chronic disorder, like people don't necessarily talk about cerebral palsy like going into adulthood. Right, because they only right. think of it as um being like a child a childhood disorder yeah so right. they don't really look at it and as like we grow up into like adulthood and i didn't know too i also learned that the life is expectancy expectancy am i saying that word? <laughs> expectancy no, you're good, is you're good. Uh, yeah it's so, um 70 years old i want you to go into that a little later because that's very interesting and and i think i might have <laughs> read some of the similar literature, but I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to talk about this though for a second. Um, I had a young lady on recently, her name is uh, Chandra Smith, um, and she's going for the title of Ms. Wheelchair America 2024. And like I told y'all last time, y'all better hit up her GoFundMe. But anyway, she said it's not the fact that she has a disability that, th th not the fact that she is, that she's in a wheelchair that creates disability. Yeah. It's the fact that the world outside that we live in isn't accessible. So I want to know what your biggest challenge is out in the world. At my job, they'd be like, uh, like out of the blue, Chance, what's your disability? That uh, was totally inappropriate. Like that. That's rude. Was like, That's yeah, rude. That was rude. That was just like they wanted to be nosy and be in business. And then the other one was like, then she tried to follow up, but like, how did it happen? And pretty much trying to get real into my business but yeah i'm gonna but tell y'all this um, let me tell y'all this real quick unless y'all are me and you got this over your video mind your fucking business that's it yeah mind your business because you are not an interviewer you're not a journalist you're just being messy and nosy and you're not yeah, informing yeah. anyone because you're not going to ask Chaz over here what his disability is and then say, uh, well, this is how it develops. These are the symptoms. This is how it's treated. Yeah. This is the research. You're just going to be messy for the sake of being fucking messy. Yeah. Work on yourselves. Worry about yourself. Worry about your disability of running your fucking mouth too much. That's what you need to worry about. Mm -hmm. Go on, Chaz. Had a moment. Go on. Had a moment. Yeah. Yeah. I, was like, I felt that. It yeah, happens. Yeah, me scared from that. I was like, oh. No, I don't I want you scared because we've already had enough, you know, scares with you. I don't need you scared. I I, I need you here in present. So yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I had a moment. <laughs> yeah, but I could tell. Like, I think what people with cerebral palsy, like, I don't know, me. I I don't mind what people act sometimes because it's like I'd rather them ask than the, to keep staring like especially when your person was here before, and I think anybody was here before, can attest but it's just like the amount of stares we get daily like it's like every day I can count on, on, on the top of my hand it's like I hear whispers when I walk I hear um I get praises sometimes too like I hear praises sometimes 
And also, too, is the people don't talk about this. I actually got money. <laughs> like people would literally see me walking and give me a dollar. I'm like, what the, <laughs> like, what the hell is this for? Like, but they be like, oh God bless you. I'm like, I'm like, shit, thank you. I'm broke. Shit. <laughs> Let me take this dollar. What the shit? I said, damn, Listen, food price is charity. Let's put this, it's charity. Let me get this dollar. God bless you. Thank you. Yo, and, and matter of fact. What's your cash app, Chaz? You got a, a cash app? What's your cash app? Uh, cash app, you Chaz B. Okay, Dollar Chaz B. Chaz B. I don't really expect money. I'm like, what are they going to give me money for? All right, so I'm going to put your cash app in the video so that, you know, if they, <laughs> they want to give you a dollar, they give you a dollar. Dollar goes a long way. Mm -hmm. You know, and they know my cash app. It's not all about me. You know, like, mm -hmm. my cash app is in here. They know mine, but listen... Chaz yeah. B, all right. Dollar <laughs> sign Chaz B. Yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll have that up in the video. <laughs> I remember we'll when that. I was <laughs> I remember when I was in middle school. Um, I used to take um, that's when I started taking public transportation. I took two buses to get to my school from the Bronx when I lived mm -hmm. in the Bronx. And I remember I think it was a uh, it was a Dominican woman. So I saw her get on the bus, and me having CP, I'm like. But, you know, she can't see that I have CP, but I'm like, you know, let me, I put my disability to, to the side and I'm like, let me give her my seat. So I gave her my seat and she sat down, she said, thank you. But I don't think she realized, like, you know, that I had to pause or anything wrong with me. So yeah. we got off at the same stop and I remember I was crossing over to go to my other bus and then um. She was running behind me, and I'm like, why is this woman running behind me? So I'm like, what is she about to do to me? But no, she was saying, I don't know, she was saying something in Spanish, and then she kept saying, God bless you. And then she was like, giving me a few dollars. So I guess she felt bad that she, because I guess she seen me walking across the street, and then she's like, oh, wait, this person has a disability, and he gave me his seat. Yeah. So she, I think she felt bad. And I was like, I'm like, what? but at the time, I'm like, why she gave me this money? But now when I think about it, I'm like, oh, that's probably why. But see, this story right here, what you said j just now, this is why you're going to go places in life. Because aside from you having a disability, you're still a kind person. You understand what I'm saying? Because yeah, anybody else, did, they're, they're able-bodied people who wouldn't even have done that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I'm guilty I of mean, it. Pregnant women admit, and there have been mornings I've been on a train and I've been like, nah, I'm not getting up because fuck it. I'm, yeah. I'm tired. I just came from, from wherever the hell I came from. It's been a long night. I literally just probably came from the club, went home, got cleaned up, and had, had had to go back out to work. So, you know, but for you to do that, I mean, that's a lot. That's big. Yeah. And like I said, you'll have everything that you want because of that, because you're that type of person. Yeah. You will. I mean, sometimes, you know, you know how New York is. Sometimes I, I feel like me living in New York with cerebral palsy, I I feel like that made me a strong individual because you know here in New York it's like I mean it really made me strong I really I feel say that much like I really took the train like, like I was so independent like I remember my father my father did not want me to take public transportation like even as an adult he still don't want me to take it I don't take the train too often now because it's it's crazy out here yeah it's wild but, yeah but I take I take the train and I'm so independent I don't know my father he did not want me to take the train because he was scared, and I was just like, but I was like, that was the independent to me, like, okay, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm walking, I want to be able to do things like everybody else, and I still, even though I'm fearful, I still would like to learn how to drive a car, but I'm still like, like, I asked people that drive to school, Posey, um, I asked them, like, their perspective, and they're like, they tell me, like, honestly, you learn when you're ready, you get on the road when you feel comfortable. Because a lot of the times with us with cerebral palsy, we don't feel totally com com um, confident on being on the road because we don't feel like we have 100% control over our body. And I think that's 90% of my struggle. Like I have my fears, like I'm not I'm lose control of my body and like, you know, something's gonna happen, like, you know, but they said, like, there's, you know, hand controls and all this stuff, but it's like, I feel like I'm not in control. But they said, once you practice and you, you get comfortable, because one of the persons I was speaking to on TikTok was through Palsy, she said she practiced for months in the parking garage before she was mm -hmm. 
even remotely ready to get on the road. She yeah. said, I have to get feel totally comfortable in my body. And everything you do, that's what any and everything you do is in due time. You do it in your time yeah. and when you're comfortable. So as um, people with cerebral palsy get older, there's very few of us that have the ability to walk. I think they said something about two and three people with cerebral palsy will have the ability to walk. But, um, you know, as we, the ones that are, that we are able to walk, we, as we get older until like the age 35, they say, they say our walking ability starts pretty much deteriorating. So um, pretty much like, you know, I would say public transportation was my biggest thing, like going, commuting from and back to work or just going anywhere in general. Like there's been a lot of times I've been on a subway and like, you know, my friends never really understood the fact that when like you save you standing up and holding on to, you know, the pole on the subway. And my friends will run and go to their seat and they'll be like, Chaz, come on, come on, sit down. And but I'm like, listen, the, the train, the train is still moving. I can't because they, they don't understand that my balance is off. So it's like literally like I'm standing there, I have to wait till the train go to a complete stop, and then I'll walk over to get a seat. But most of the time with um with me, people like, you know, they say, oh, if you see somebody with a disability, um, give up your seat. But most of the time people don't look at me as being disabled, so they don't understand. And um recently when I took um the plane, I just started like requesting like a wheelchair service before I would go to like do TSA and everything like a regular person. And it's like Okay, and I'll be taking long sometimes, and I have family members like, "Come on, Jazz, hurry up, hurry up, we're gonna miss the plane." And I'm like, "I'm like, really? Like, <laughs> like sometimes I feel like sometimes my family don't even understand my disability." But um, yeah, as far as like I started requesting wheelchair, and then um, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I would go in like you know, just like everybody else, and then. And then I didn't know, like until recently, like you can board er early on the flight if you if you tell them like you know you're disabled. So I started doing that because I'm like, I do need help. Like sometimes putting my bag up there, you know. And I was like, you know, I, I said, Chad, you have to start looking at yourself, like you're you're a person with a disability. Because I've walked through life most of the time, like you know, ain't nothing wrong with me. Because you know, I have family members tell me that ain't nothing wrong with Chaz. So like I remember I told the um I forgot what you call those people um, at the gate um no it was, the, I don't uh, know, the airline I was flying the customer service like the the ticket people yeah ticket customer agents. service yeah. so I was, yeah yeah I went to the ticket agent and I told them I said listen I'm a person with a disability um is it possible that I can board early because they didn't call. Because this particular um, airline didn't call, say, you know, you can board early if you have a disability. So I just asked them. And the guy literally looked me up and down. He was like, I guess, like, <laughs> like he okay. didn't believe. Like, uh -uh. Hold up, hold up, stop, stop, stop. Which airline was this and which airport was this? This was in LaGuardia. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say American. Really? American Airlines. Shame on you, American Airlines at LaGuardia American Airport. Airlines. Shame on you. Shame on you. You need to train your people better. You need to train yeah, American your people Airlines. better. Shame on you. Yeah. And where were you flying? Where were you going? Um, where, where was I going? Yeah. Where were you flying to? Oh, I was flying to North Carolina to see my um, family for Thanksgiving. North Carolina. That was yeah, All right. recently. And that was in in uh, last year right you said thanksgiving is that what you said yeah yeah 2020 okay. yeah, 2020. yeah you uh people out there watching and listening y'all know exactly who that person is um either fire them or retrain them do something because um that's unacceptable unacceptable <laughs> um because here's the thing this is what i know about disabilities um two things i'll share with you anyone can become disabled at any point in time for any reason and shout out to Chandra again, because she's the one who told me that. And I kind of knew that anyway, but shout out to her for telling me that. The other thing is, 
a person may have a disability and may not look like they have a disability. Everyone with a disability is not, you know, using a walker or wearing shades because they're blind or, you know, in a wheelchair. You know, there are people with disabilities who look like me and Chaz. So kindness goes a long way and patience goes a long way. And shame on whoever that was, that that guy um, at American Airlines who, who treated you that way. Um, I'm going to go in even more. What did he look like, this guy? Was he black? Was he white? Was he Hispanic? Young? I think he was, I think he was Hispanic, but I'm not sure really, to be honest. Yeah. Tall, short, fat, skinny. What did he look like? He was pretty tall. Shame on not you. Not sure. Shame on you. Um. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Chaz is early, and and is early in the show, and I don't want to, because I get started on it, man. I tell you, I get started on here. You've seen the show, so you know how I, how I do. Yeah. Um. All right. You know what I'm doing in the background. We're not going to say what I'm doing in the background yet, but you know. Anyway. Um. Wow. Okay. A lot of people, a lot, a lot of what benefits people living with disabilities, though, I'll say is, um, you know, it, it also benefits people without disabilities. Like if you take, for instance, curb cuts, you know, like how the curb dips when, you, you know, you walk up on the curb and it dips into the street or adaptive clothing, you know, clothing with maybe like instead of buttons and zippers, you have snaps, um, even closed captioning on the TV. Because, I mean, how many times have we all been at the gym, you know, in a noisy gym on a treadmill or an elliptical, which is, you know, my favorite. Um, and, you know, the elliptical is noisy. <laughs> you know, that, that, that stair stuff, you know, that shit is noisy. But how yeah. many times have we been doing that and we have closed captioning on? You know what I'm saying? You know, all of these things um, that benefit people with disabil disabilities also mm -hmm. benefit people without disabilities. So I just think it's yeah. important for all of those things to, you know, to, to be in existence and help all of us, you know? Not everyone looks at people with cerebral palsy the same way. Like I have had people in the past and my friends um, that I met, like they would tell me like, oh, Chaz, um, they were like, oh, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, what do you mean what's wrong with me? I have, I said, I have cerebral palsy. And then they like, wait, what? They're like, oh, we didn't know, we didn't notice your lift until today, and and mind you, some of these people I was friends with for uh, like a month or so, and I'm like, how, how have you noticed me limping? I don't, know, I don't know. It was very confusing for me, but I had my parents say one time, like they would say, like, oh, Jazz, I didn't even know that was you walking because you weren't, you weren't limping. So I don't know. It's that some of uh, I was, I've been told I limp sometimes, and sometimes. It is not noticeable. I guess it depends on the day. I don't know. I mean, for me, I see myself one way, but I never know how everybody else see me. So it's different. And then I had a, um, a girl tell me one time, she was like, um, Chaz, you know, your, your seat is not as, as, as you said. I, know, I was very confused about what she meant, but she, I guess she meant like, you know, the way I thought, my cerebral palsy function is not the way that she saw me, but it's like everybody else sees you different. Like, you know, some people will say, oh, I, I just, as the guy with the lamp, or some people will see me like, like as I'm helpless. And, um, and then the main thing, one of the main things I wanted to talk to you about is that people with cerebral palsy, listen, we like sex just as much as an able-bodied person. So we, <laughs> we like sex. Like, I think a lot of people look at people with cerebral palsy or any other kind of disability, like you can't be um, sexual. And, you know, and we, we have this, our body parts, our body parts, <laughs> our body parts function just like everybody else. It's like, you know, I don't know how to explain, you know, what goes up, <laughs> what goes up like everybody else. And I don't know. I don't know if it's like if people that with a person with a disability, if they, if they have this mindset that they're afraid that they're going to hurt, 
hurt somebody with cerebral palsy or any other type of disability, communicate with that person. And just communicate with that person and just talk to them. Like, okay, like just ask some questions before, like, or even like, I know I'm not going to go too much into my experience, but you know, sometimes questions are asked during the act. And, you know, if it can be frustrating, but then you got to think of it at, on the person then like, you know, it's frustrating, but they just want to be, they just want to know, they just want to be informed. And you're probably the first person they had sex with, with cerebral palsy or some type of disability. So you have to know that a lot of people are not aware and don't know what cerebral palsy is or like other disabilities. And, and I have to remember too, I'm also a unique case in the sense that with my type of cerebral palsy, it's weird. I live in the middle. It's like I'm considered able-bodied and disabled. So it's like I'm not totally disabled and I'm not totally able-bodied. And it's like I live in the middle. And sometimes that can be frustrating um, because it's like you don't know where you really belong. If you are you have people with um, cerebral palsy and they will look and if you're not, or you have an able-bodied person and would not look at you like as being, you're not able, you're not one of them, like you're not an able-bodied person. It's always like you're always in like in this middle gray area, and i um, growing up too. I never felt belonged, so it's like, am I totally disabled if if, if I'm able body? So it's like, where do I fit in this place? It's really hard to get jobs. I've been very fortunate to able to have get jobs. Um, I worked all the way up until like I started. I think I started my first first job was probably some youth and ever since 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 I started summer youth at 14 years old and um um and ever since I've been working since I was 14 years old um I haven't been unemployed for more than I want to say a month or so and if I was employed if I was unemployed it was due to um, probably unemployed for like two months and that would be my job was closed for those months. But like I'll talk about my experience um, going to get a job on my first, um, looking for a job at first. I remember going walking through the city, going into jobs and every time I had an interview, I noticed that as soon as I walk into the office, I would try to um, fix the way I walked to, so, so employees wouldn't notice my limp at first or try. I, I noticed sometimes as soon as like an employer saw me limping or noticed me limping, I, I knew like as soon as they made that, like they would look down and look up at me, I knew from that in time that I wouldn't get that job. And with me, I was very determined, I always, try to look for jobs and sometimes, and as I got older, I just stopped disclosing my disability. I wouldn't even mention it because I knew if I mentioned it, their jobs would be like, oh, we're not gonna, um, they were, you know, they weren't gonna hire me, but they can't blatantly say that directly. But, you know, they tell you that jobs are not supposed to discriminate, but they do. So let's shift gears a little bit. I'm about to get. I, I want to get in your business. I want to get in your business. How'd you get into photography? Well, you know, uh, I know everybody always asks me that. It's funny because um, in high school, I, I was like, not in high school, but pretty much, you know, when that show America's Next Top Model was out. So, I, you know, high school, I, I was watching it, and you know, um, I used to look at the photographers shooting the models and stuff, and especially Nigel Barker, and I was like man, maybe this is something I want to do. I wasn't really sure, you know? So I was like, if... So when I was applying to colleges, I'll say, you know, maybe I would do something in the arts. And then when I um, was looking at colleges, I, I applied to either graphic design or photography. So when I got accepted to Casanova College, that's what I decided to major. 
And then from there, it was just like, I don't know. I just love the, I just love the creative side of it. And, you know, expressing myself creatively. Cause I feel like a lot of times I can express myself through the arts and I can do words. <laughs> So I think that was like my best, my uh, photography is like my best form of communication to me. Nice. Um, take, take us inside your process. Like what programs do you use when you're, you know, you're doing photography and everything or like, you know, the after, um, you know, after processing. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't think like, you know, see that photography is very physical, especially when I learned the basics, like black and white film photography and like developing film, and, like in my freshman year of college, like, you know, the process of developing film and how much of it is like, like a lot of standing in a dark room and stuff. And, but I use right now, currently I do mostly digital. I use pretty much Lightroom and Photoshop, um, things of that nature. But a lot of that requires just a lot of sit, sitting in stuff, the actual taking pictures. Photography, I didn't realize is a lot physical than anything until I actually started doing it and get, and as I got older and doing events, it's like, I really felt like how much of a physical and demanding task it is. In the past, a lot of people would look at my pictures and like even my family members, I don't know if it's because like, that because uh, of my cerebral palsy, but I feel like some of the like the pictures I shown them, like they were like you took this, like they would be surprised that I took that. I'm like, just because I have um, cerebral palsy, don't mean I can take like beautiful pictures. But I think I don't know. I'm thinking in my they didn't imagine, and it's it's not a lot of um people with cerebral palsy that do photography. I think I'm. Knew I know one girl on TikTok that I follow. Like she just, she's like, oh, I'm a photographer. I have cerebral palsy. I'm looking for models, but I don't think there's too many people with cerebral palsy that that done all I've done. Because as I said, like photography is is very demanding, physical. Like one of the shoots I did was like at a um, it was like a at a falls near my college, and it was like. And I wanted to get the shot so bad, but I was like, I have to realize too, a lot of the shots that I want to get, I'm limited to, to, like just because of the angle and stuff, but I'll be taking risks. Like I'll climb on the rock and try, to, and that was, that was very dangerous because I'm trying to keep my balance. So it's just like, I'm holding. And at the same time, sometimes too, with the, with me and photography, I'm holding the camera like this. And sometimes I'll be shaking, but I'll be trying to like suck in my breath so I could calm my body down. Cause sometimes my body, um, tremors and have shakes and so that's all a part, uh, part of cp so you did a really dope shoot um there was a young lady uh man she was kind of tall um she's a big girl um dark skin brown skin had long <laughs> hair like her photos are beautiful oh thank you that was actually a part of my thesis in college that i wrote about it was basically um the title of that series, and I was in it too as well. She had photographed me. We were posing like as Greek gods and goddesses, because as um, a, a people of color, we was posing like I feel like that was seen as like the ideal beauty. So the reason how I came up with that shoot and idea and my thesis for my paper it was basically about um, my thesis was about representation of African Americans through photographic media. And then I talked about, you know, a, a lot anywhere from between, um, um, you know, um, Black people not feeling like they're beautiful because of skin tones and the, um, the racism within our race with, um, you know, the light skin and dark skin and, you know, the whole ignorance with that. And then, and basically, I didn't, I didn't even want to include myself, but one of my professors talked about me including myself. I wanted to focus on, on her because I wanted her to feel like, you know, I know like when we went, our school was predominantly white. And, you know, I wanted everyone to see like the beauty that I seen in her. Like, you know, I always thought my, she's my best friend. So I always felt like, oh, she has an amazing personality. She's beautiful. Like, and what's I, her name? I her what's her friend's name? What's her name? Oh, Jojo. Of course, Shout Jojo. Out to Jojo. Sure. Ja Janisha, yeah, Jojo. What's her name? Janisha? 
Yeah, Janisha will call her JoJo. Shout out to JoJo, Janisha. Um, watch the show. Tell your friends. Yeah, that shoot, that shoot was interesting because it's like a lot of people don't notice uh, what we had to do to get that those shots. Like we were literally standing and we went to a fabric store. I think the first few times we did it was actually just black sheets, but we did it in the studio in my school and we used two lights and you know we're not that tall. We were both standing on stools with no support. So imagine like her standing on a stool trying to keep her balance and then me with my CP on the stool trying to keep our balance. That And the stool was like so tiny. So we were both like, oh my God, but she delivered like she got on that stool like the risk that she took to get those shots like oh i say we worked so well together i was like and i knew i was a photographer to do that shoot because it was like i wanted to express how how i viewed her you know i wanted people to see her. i thought she was tall no we were standing on stools had no business standing on the stool. like you made her look like larger than life as far as how yeah. tall she is so that's yeah. that's that that's really dope. That says a lot about what how you view her and what you wanted other people to see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah my, yeah, my whole idea with that shoot was like, you know, how the 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 Greek sculptures and you know, how the Greek goddesses and gods was on sculptures and how they looked they were on pedestals and they looked larger than life. You know, like their beauty was just like so hot. So that's what was my whole concept and idea behind that is like I wanted to see her to see herself as a black woman, like you're beautiful, like you should be on a pedestal, like they should be looking up at us. That was, I would say that's the best part to the day. Well, what's your favorite part of that process? Like the whole entire, you know, soup the nuts, you know, from taking the pictures or planning the shoot to, you know, editing them and, and getting them out there. Like what's your favorite part of the process? I'm not really a big fan of editing. And it took me a while to learn that because I dread, like, I really dread editing pictures. <laughs> but, you know, they got people to do that. So if ever, if I ever, like, really get back into it, oh, I would still do it, but I don't do it as much anymore because, you know, it's because uh, I think I was doing a lot of jobs that was, like, physically demanding, like, parties and stuff. So that was, like, taking a toll on me. But my favorite part is, like, pretty much in the moment shooting. And like being expired or seeing something through the lens that the, you know someone else can't see, and just the whole process of shooting, interacting with people, and just making the other person feel like, you know, it's like that moment where you see like the other person is feeling like they feel confident and, and beautiful, and that, and that's my goal in photography is to make whatever subject I'm shooting just to make them feel confident and beautiful. Wow, that's dope. And, and you know what? A lot of creative people say the same thing. It's like the initial thing that they do is the is their favorite process. Like with this, I like interviewing people. I like talking to people. I like yeah. I'm 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 an extrovert. Like I, I like to chat. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, you know, I like to vibe with folks and, and feed off of their energy and everything. And I mean, you know, and then I like I say, you know, I do all of this by myself. So um I would say for me, like the, the worst part of all of this is probably the editing, but I want to shift gears though. I, 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 uh, for a moment, Chaz, uh, there was a study put out a couple of years ago by the uh, American Neurological Association. And I think that was what you were talking about earlier. And it, it mentions that, like you were saying, adults with CP may not only require ongoing uh, neuro neurological care, but they also have that which you mentioned that two times the risk of stroke and there are other health concerns, you know, that are major. I want you to, uh, you know, talk to us about that. Tell us more about that. Yeah. Like, um, they, I know, I think I read something in that study too, about like the chronic fatigue and, um, it was something else. It started with Emma, my path, something, it was sort of something with the, um, the neck. I don't know. I forgot what it's called. I forgot. I can't think of it right now. But yeah, it's just like uh, for me right now, I notice that like as I'm getting older, I do feel a difference in my body and my stamina and um, even in my um, my joints and my knees. I never really talked to anybody about this, but I've been having like a lot of knee pain, especially like, you know, going up and down the stairs and stuff. 
And that's very concerning for me because, you know, I'm an active person. And in my mind, when, you, when you're a person with cerebral palsy, especially when you're a person that's like have the ability that I have with cerebral palsy, you think you, you never take for granted, like me every day that I get up and I'm able to walk, I, I think of it as a huge blessing, you know? But in the back of my mind, I'm like, am I always gonna have this ability? Like, um, if, like if I'm gonna be able to walk on it, or as I get older, am I gonna need like, you know, a walking device or would I just be totally like unable to walk as I get older, you know? and I as I get older and I was like, I think about that all the time. So like when I go up the stairs and, you know, my knees start hurting and a lot, you know, I don't often complain about stuff because if I say like, oh, my knees are hurting, you know, some older person, like, you know, elderly person, they were like, boy, you young, what are you complaining about knee pain? You don't know nothing about no knee pain. And it's like, okay, I'm not your average young person. Like I do have to be 40. <laughs> And then it's like, like you know, you try to fuck what them old people got to say. They don't know what you've been through. Like they just run in their mouths. Like they're fucking miserable. All the time. I want to share this with you though. Um, it's actually called myliopathy. Um, yeah, you know, there you go. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but um, it is an injury to the spinal cord caused by severe compression that may be a result of spinal stenosis, disc degeneration, disc herniation autoimmune disorders or other trauma. When any part of the spinal cord is compressed, it causes nerve dysfunction along with the spinal cord resulting in pain, loss of balance, coordination, and numbness in the area around a compression point. Myliopathy can occur in any area along the spinal cord. Now there are three types. Cervical um, occurs in the neck. Thoracic occurs in the mid region of, of, of the spine and lumbar which is not as common as cervical or thoracic, lumbar myliopathy occurs in the lower region of the spine. And yeah. um, it says the symptoms are pain in the lower back, neck, arm, or leg, tingling or numbness and weakness, decreased fine motor skills, balance and coordination, mm -hmm. abnormal or decreased reflexes in extremities, difficulty walking, loss of bowel or bladder function. And... Diagnosis of my, myliopathy, uh, spine x-ray to rule out other causes of back or neck pain, spine MRI or spine CT, show areas of pressure on the spinal canal, myliography to determine the location and presence of abnormalities on the uh, spinal cord, electromyogram to determine the exact nerve root that is involved. Uh, treatment options, you have non-surgical and surgical treatment options, um, physical therapy and exercise, bracing, taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, uh, interventional techniques such as nerve block spinal injections, epidural injections in the lumbar and cervical spine, activity modification. Now, there are surgical treatments uh, for myliopathy, spinal decompression surgery, dissectotomy. I think I said that right. Dissectotomy. <laughs> laminectomy, spinal fusion. Listen, I'm a, I'm a hood dude. You got to forgive me. <laughs> for for, 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 for minotomy, disc replacement surgery. And that information is courtesy of Penn Medicine, University of Penn. So shout out to them. Um, have you experienced any of those symptoms that I listed that I just talked about? Yeah, as you were reading, I'm like, wow, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that. <laughs> but Which like, one? especially Which like, I, like I have, um, you know, lower back pain. Um, I have like sometimes I get like numbness, tingling, but um, I I always assume that um, it's from my scoliosis, and that's another thing that that um they forget to mention. But a lot of times, uh, well, no, they do tell you that like a lot of um kids who have cerebral palsy, they they most um, sometimes it's common to develop scoliosis as the, the child grows. And that's what happened to me. Um, yeah, my spine started curving. So I just assumed anything associated with my, my back is due to scoliosis. So yeah, scoliosis in itself has affected me more than probably the cerebral palsy is really 
is, um, and I say that because when I develop scoliosis, I also develop this thing called hip subluxation, I believe it's called. And it's where you're, it, there's like a pretty much a dislo dislocation of the hip, like pretty much um, people, for, uh, when I explain this to some people, I don't tell too many people about this, but like my hip, I believe on my left side is a part of my stomach. And that's because um, due to my scoliosis, um, my hip was um, displaced or dislocated. I don't know how you want to say it, but yeah. And also with scoliosis too, they don't talk about that. You know, my organs are shifted too as well. So it's like, when you look at me, <laughs> you can't tell these things and I don't often talk about it. So it's, it's like, I, I do have a lot going on with my body like this. Like every day, there's not a day that I wake up without pain or anything like that. But, you know, I, I'm able to go to work every day. I'm able to function on a daily basis. And, you know, and oftentimes I do not talk about it because there are people out there when you start to educate people about your disability. I learned this recently. Um, somebody like DM me or message me and I was like, I posted a video or something on TikTok or, you know, I started posting videos about my cerebral palsy, me growing up with cerebral palsy. And they're like, oh, you just, you just want people to feel bad about you. Or they, this is a way to get people to like you. You just want people to feel sorry for you. And I'm like, no, that's not what it is. And I'm like, you probably don't, you probably don't think that's what it is, but that's, that's what it is. And I'm like, and it's like, Wow, and it's like as soon as you get the courage to talk talk your truth and talk about your experience living with a disability, you gotta deal with these ignorant people. And I had no idea like people like that really exist. I'm like, I I gotta say something real quick. This person DM'd you. Is that what you said? Hmm. This person yeah. DM'd you. Is that what you said? Who who is this person that DM'd you? What's their name? Oh I want no, their name. I, don't I'm know, not, I, even listen, I just want to talk to him. I'm not, I'm not going to hurt him. I'm not going to do anything. I just want to talk. No, I blocked him. Of course, there'd be the people with no picture. Like they, it's like oh, those, oh, those are my favorite. You, sir. Oh, they're my favorite. Nine, nine, something. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are my favorite. Oh, I, I love the bots and the trolls. Oh, I have fun with them. Yeah. Oh yeah, I have fun with them. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's oh, like... those are my favorite. Um, <laughs> yeah. Chaz, can you tell me what the the hip thing was called though? That you, the hip term. subluxation. Okay, because I'm hip, I want to look hips. that up. Yeah, let let's see what they say about that because as I have you on here, you know I don't want you to just say things and then you know people don't know what it is. I mean, of course they can Google these things, but I want to be as informative as possible. So. Um, yeah. Listen, I'm still googling stuff about cerebral palsy every day. I'll, hey, that's, but you know what? That's good because you want to educate yourself. Yeah, you, know? you want to educate yourself, and yeah. and you want to, um, you know, you want to know exactly what it is that you're going through so that you can help others and help yeah. yourself. You know, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So hip subluxation. It looks like. Uh, common signs and symptoms include joint swelling, pain in the joint, visible deformity, spasms over the thigh and buttocks, bruising, difficulty moving a leg, uh, tingling, numbness, muscle weakness, difficulty walking, difficulty bearing weight or standing on the affected hip, leg on the side or of the affected hip may appear shorter and may be turned inward or outward. Um, treatment depends on the extent, extent of the subluxation and other associated injuries. Um, mm -hmm. There are non-surgical procedures. Um, I, I just really want everybody to do their research. And um, also just, again, I'm going to say it again, be kind. Be kind. Um, now, March was Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month. You know, again, we can commemorate all year round. But how do you normally commemorate? I just start educating people like about like my my type of this um, cerebral palsy because to be honest i still don't know a lot about i try to learn about the other types of disability um, cerebral palsy there's like four types 
And I'm like, I really want to, like, you know, respect and know all the types. But it's like, there's so much I'm learning about mines. I'm like, my type is, like, I haven't got to the other types. So it's like pretty much just educating people about my experience of living with cerebral palsy, which I started back in like, what, 2019, I want to say. So I never, I, yeah, and back then, I think that was the first time I learned that marches with like cerebral palsy awareness well, because I didn't know. And I, and I just learned like, I think October, no, is it, I think it's December, it's one day in December. I know one day in October, there's a cerebral palsy world day. And then in, in something in December is a day in December where it's international people with disabilities and something like that. Um, it looks like World Cerebral Palsy Day is uh, October 6th. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that, and, and hey, you know, you can commemorate in October, you know, but we just want to inform the people. We want everybody to know about these dates, about, you know, your symptoms, what you experience in the world, because this is all about education. It's all about informing people and letting people know um, what goes on and they may know someone, you know, in, in their lives with cerebral palsy. I mean, one in four people, you know, in the world are living with a disability. I mean, that, that's a number that represents one billion people. So that means that all of us know someone who's living with a disability, or we may be the one with a disability ourselves. So yeah. it's just very important, you know, to be educated and so that we can understand because people fear the things that they don't know. And a lot of times fear comes out as ignorance and mm -hmm. ignorance comes out as, you know, people making fun of you or people saying horrible things in your DMs. Here's the thing with you though. Now see, you've been, you've been pretty chill the most part throughout this interview. And, <laughs> I, and, I, and, I, and I'm gonna tell y'all something. I don't want you guys to be fooled by Chaz's little sweet, little innocent kid, and, kid from kid and play feet. Chaz turns <laughs> up. Yeah. Right? He's a party dude. Yes. So oh. I want you to tell people what your social life is like for someone living with CP. Oh, my social life. Well, uh, ooh, this is a wild boy. <laughs> but I would say this. Um, I, um, I just recently learned this, too, because I follow this girl on Instagram, and she talked about, like, you know, her experience going out. And I was, wow, I never knew that. I didn't even think about that until it happened to me. So going out, it's like interesting because when I meet people at first, like most of my friends I met in like in the nightlife going out, you know, I was drinking, doing hookah, <laughs> you know, I do all that stuff. But it's like a lot of times people like they don't they don't notice. I guess I don't know because because it's like a crowded place, but they don't know to notice my disability right um right off the bat. But um, I was about the experience since we uh experience i had since we um talk about nightlife um i went out it was halloween with um it was a halloween i don't know what year was it but it was a halloween night i you know went out to this bar and you know we paid a couple charge and everything so you know we was having fun you know i'm drinking and everything and so i, uh, I step out the bar for a second and the lady at the door, I went to go back in. She said, she told my friend in Spanish, oh, you can go in, but he's he's done. He can't. He's too drunk. And I was like, and I was like, what? What is happening? Well, like, why? I, I was so confused. And then my friend was confused, too, because I, I was like, I know how I am when I had too much to drink. And I was still like, you know, I knew I was still coherent. I it was like nothing wrong. I knew I was going to, I had like about what, I think one drink and I'm like, well, she's trying to put me out. But I didn't realize until listening to um, um, this girl on Instagram, I, I believe, um, shout out to OT Mel. Um, she shout was- Shout out to OT Mel. Yes, for Cerebral Palsy Awareness Month. She, um, I think last year she was stating facts about CP. So, mm -hmm she was sharing her experience with like her nightlife and like, you know, tips with people with cerebral palsy going out in the nightlife. And she was like pretty much like 
to, you know, tell people up front that you have, like, you want to let your friends know, like, you know, to explain to people that if you get stopped, to let them know that you have a disability. Because I didn't realize that lady, she thought I was drunk because of the way I was walking. So she assumed the way I was walking was due to because I was too, I was too drunk. And she didn't realize that it was my um, cerebral palsy. And I didn't realize until recently that, you know, when you drink alcohol as a person with CDP, your walking ability gets impaired too. So your ability gets like 10 times max. <laughs> so, so it's like, okay. So I got put out of um, bars before and I always thought like, what? why do you think I'm so drunk? It was because my CP. And I never realized that. Wow. Man, I would have never thought of that either. See, this is why I have you on. This is Chaz. This is why I have you on. And this is why I'm doing this show. Because people need to be aware of things like this. You know? And people need to understand, um, you know, the, the things that, you know, you go through. And I want you to share some encouraging words, though, for someone who, you know, is out there, they're living with CP, or maybe they have another disability, and they feel ashamed or they feel insecure. I would say, you know, um, don't let anyone, and I'm talking to myself too, don't let anyone dim your light, you know, just because you have cerebral palsy, you're still a per you're still a person, you're still human, just like everybody else, you have feelings, you have like desires and everything else. So don't let what people have to say, that's, don't let them, their insecurities project on you. And, and at the end of the day, you're human just like everybody else. So just because you have cerebral palsy, you are a person first. And the cerebral palsy is only a part of who you are. Nice. Nice. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that, that was, listen, you, you're not going to make me cry, though. Only, only Chandra Smith can do that. You're not going to make me cry today. Um, What's the what's but what's one of the wildest things someone's ever said to you regarding your disability though? I don't know how if I can curse on here. I don't know. Oh yeah, you can <laughs> curse on here. I was just cursing earlier. What do you mean? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we turn up. I'm listen, like... listen, Chaz. I want you to relax. Like we turn up on this motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> you can say whatever the fuck you want. You just can't, yeah, well, listen. One thing. One one rule though. You just can't bash black women. That's my only my only rule. You cannot bash black women. Oh, uh, listen, I'll never, I'll never bash, we can bash black everybody women. Everybody the fuck else. We could talk all the shit listen, that you want to do. Let me tell you, black women are the reason why I'm standing in it as strong as I am today. Exactly. It's because of black women. Okay, <laughs> let me tell you that. Uh, it's this individual, I would say, said literally, oh, you have a fucked up walk, but I will still fuck you. <laughs> Yeah. Who was this individual? Do we have this person's name? Do we have their screen name? Do we have that that? I'm listen again. Yeah, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to do anything. I just want to talk. I don't them. remember because it was like it was. Yeah, it was one of those days like you know you out and about in the oh. in the nightclubs, you know, and it's like you know this was in my early twenties and I was out and about, and this person literally like said that to me in passing and I'm just like what I had people like yeah people got a lot I have of friends like, yeah. real bold real bold I have yeah I have friends that mock mock the way I walk and you know but it was like one of them like it was like one of the uncomfortable like I don't know it was like a thin line because they, I guess they got so used to me like I'm jokeful and playful about my disability. Like I'll joke about myself. Like, you know, I'll tell people like jokingly and I know some people may be offended at me, but I think this, it helps me. Like I joke about my disability because there's a lot of pain with it too. So, you know, I have to make a joke. So I'll say like, oh, I walk like, I said, oh, why y'all walking so fast? Y'all know I walk like an injured horse. Like, and they like, Chaz, don't say that. <laughs> I had a teacher in summer camp her name was Miss, Miss uh, Martha, Martha Mack. And 
she was like this short white lady and she had CP. And all I just thought was that, you know, she just walked with a limp. I thought maybe, you know, she had an injury or something like that. Maybe something happened to her, but she had CP. And one of the things she used to tell us when we would act up, and now that I think about it, she because I know you people with CP, like y'all tend to make jokes about the CP. But one of the things she used to say all the time was, you guys better get on the good foot. And I just, I don't know. <laughs> but y'all have a tendency to do that. Like y'all make yeah. fun of your CP. Do, and this yeah, is just something do, she used yeah, to tell I do that, us. I do that all the time. I have people yeah. look at me when I'm doing they be like, oh, it's not okay to laugh. I feel like y'all can laugh. It's okay. <laughs> but they be like, oh my God, Chaz, did you but just that's, say that? that's, like, that's very kind of them and, and very that's very important yeah. to ask permission first. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I'm big on that. I'm big on permission. I'm big on respect. And you need to ask people permission first if it's okay. You know, like, I, yeah. anybody I have on, even in real life, like, I ask people permission first because I didn't know what if I could refer to it as CP, but you said that's okay. Because CP, in yeah. my mind, because you know I make everything the way I make it, I'm like, CP, you mean color people? It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't even think, oh my God, I didn't even think. Right, I'm like, color people? Like a, a, a color people warrior? You know, we on, we on CP time, yeah. we on color people time, that's, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I <laughs> But, no, this is why it's important to have these conversations yeah. because you completely made me feel comfortable with saying CP, CP warrior. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it stands for. And some white person probably made that that CP time shit up any fucking way. Some white person made that shit up being fucking racist. So fuck them. Like I sometimes I use it in abbreviation to see if like who knows what it is. But sometimes when I say CP, people are like, oh, so we will it. And I'm always amazed on how many people know, because there's a lot of people that know what serial palsy is, but there's also a lot, a lot that don't know. Right, right. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's why so you out like, here, you know, you're educating us. You're, you're educating us. You're giving us the information and you're letting us know what it is and what it isn't. And, and I'm, I'm happy for that. I'm glad that you're doing that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it doesn't mean colored people, even though as colored people, we could be warriors from colored people because we're colored people, but that's not what it means. So we will pause it. And is it, yeah. and this is the other thing, because I struggle sometimes with pronunciation. Is it cerebral or cerebral? Did I say it correctly? I don't know. I say it both ways too, because my pronunciation is... You're going to see in this video, you're going to be like, what the hell is he saying? But listen, I'm going to blame it on CP. CP affects the speech too, damn it. <laughs> so I'm going to blame it on that. Oh, my goodness. But I know one time um, a friend of mine was, like, mocking the way I walk, and I'm just like, okay. like It's like, Chaz, don't get offended. I'm just like, okay, why do you have to tell a story about my door? We all know how I walk. Right, right? and I mean, and, and is this person still your friend? I hope not, because that's not a friend, like, real talk. <laughs> yeah, no. Good. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. Whoever yeah, said no. that, fuck you. That that was that was very fucked up. Fuck you. <laughs> it was very fucked up to make oh, fun of somebody for that. And, and then to say like, don't be offended. Like, but I'm gonna make fun of you. Like, what kind of yeah. fucking trash are you? Like, that's fuck. You're fucking trash. Yeah. Anyway, like you're fucking. Tra I swear. Yeah. Like I, I wasn't. Yo, I wasn't prepared for this show at all. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. Yeah. I didn't you want to hear a funny story, though? I didn't know how this was going to go. I do. I want to hear a funny story, though. Okay. So my co-worker, and I'm Viola Davis. If you ever watching this, who knows? She might be watching this one day. But I want to say Viola Davis. Remember and, um, she played Annalise Keating and How to Get Away with Murder? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I think a co-worker of mine said something like he was, it was like mocking away mocking the way she walked and it was like why 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 would they just walk like this and i just i just looked at him and i and i and i said in front of him like we was having a meeting at my job i said and i was like i feel like you low-key making fun of me and everybody just started busting up like this chad you crazy i'm like no i'm for real i was dead serious so i'm like <laughs> you know why is everybody coming from the way she walked like you don't know <laughs> you know one day i hope and believe me 
I'm manifesting it, but also things have been happening with this show and I've been getting emails and calls and things like that. But one day I hope that I can talk with Viola Davis and I can interview her. And I love Vi Vi Viola Davis, by the way, because she reminds me of my mother, like her and my mother look alike. But, and my mother also looks like Alfie Woodard too, but whatever. But I, and I, I love Alfie Woodard also, but I just want to ask her, what was behind that with that character? Like, was that because Annalise is, was a bit of a drunk? Because remember, Annalise was a drunk, you know? Or yeah. was that maybe she just, you know, I don't know, maybe it was Viola. Because I don't ever remember seeing Viola walk funny in, in heels. Oh, no, they, you know? no, they, it was, it's I a think long that was thing. definitely the character. No, they definitely came. They always in every role since I believe since like the help they was coming for her walk and then like you really? know she and she you know she did I think under one interview I saw she said something about like you know how that made her feel she was like listen that's just like you know she said I see all the time in the comments people talking about my walk and everything and it's like that's just how she walks yeah okay so I think cool. she did like some she was. She, I think she practiced walking like so, so it wouldn't be mm -hmm. as noticeable. But who knows? But like you know, because people was like, it was all in the comments and everything. But people always got something to say. But look, she's amazing. So she, I love Viola Davis. So, like she can do no wrong. She can do no wrong. Um, but the thing is, you know, again, people need to be kind. People need to be kind. Yeah. Be kind in the comments. Be kind. Just think, think before you speak. And think to yourself, would I say this to a person in person? And if that person didn't know me, what do I think their reaction would be? Because if you say something off the wall to me, you know, in person, I don't know what I might do. It depends yeah. on the day, because there are some days that people have said crazy things to me and I've just walked away. There are other days that I've gotten locked up. So, I don't know. But you know what, Chaz? This is about you. This is all about you. This is your day. <laughs> What's dating like for you? Oh, dating, uh, dating is interesting. Especially, especially being a gay man with Cerebral Palsy. That, that is, like, very interesting. That's just, like... Like, I don't even know how to put into words, but if you ever have a chance and if you haven't watched, this is probably the, the first show that I watched in my life where I finally felt seen. And it's a, a show about um, a gay man living with true palsy and I think like the Los Angeles area, California somewhere. Um, it's called Special on Netflix. I have seen that. I okay. have seen that. My only thing with that was, though, and me and Chandra Smith spoke about it on our in interview where representation matters. And yeah. I saw that oh, yeah. he was a white guy. He was white. I mean, granted, mm -hmm. y'all have the same disability you could relate, but it would be nice to see someone Black living with a disability who truly has a disability being on a show like that. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? But I did see yeah. that show. I did see that show. And there were some funny moments. But what I found myself doing while I was watching it was there were parts when I didn't know if I should laugh or not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. Yeah, no. But tell yeah, us about that. Yeah, that's how it is for us. Like, huh? But how is it for you though? Oh. Like you specifically, like I mean, that was a show. Oh yes, yeah. for me, it's I don't know. I got a show. Like show I want to. <laughs> nah, that's why. You listen, that's why I'm here. You know, we're not gonna have a camera just on you and you doing the interview by yourself. <laughs> that's yeah. why I'm here. But no, what's it like for you though? Just you, you know, as Chaz. Um, it's just me. I think it's probably like I don't talk about it often, but it's like one of the most hard and painful. And painful things to be honest. It's like it's it's like because it's like now that I'm putting myself out there to date, like it's pretty much like accepting myself as being a gay man with and then accepting myself being a gay man with through palsy, that was a whole nother thing. 
but it's like then it's like you got to put yourself out there but and it's like you would think like you know the gay community is like you know open and accepting of people with disabilities and I don't know. I haven't. I haven't seen that, and I have a very mild form of cerebral palsy, so it's very interesting as far as going out to date. Like I feel like it would be easier for me to meet a guy in person as opposed to doing everything on these on the apps because on this app on these apps it's like everything goes left field. So I struggle, and to this day I struggle with even in person. I struggle with. The fact that do I put that I have true palsy in my profile or when I'm out in person, do I discuss my disability right off the bat? And there's instance where I didn't go up front and tell the guy about my disability and, you know, and then um, and that it just, you know, went smooth. And, and then eventually I opened up and expressed it and everything was fine. But for some reason, it just didn't work out. Or I'll, you know, have one on my profile that I have through palsy, and then I get no response. But as soon as I take that out of my profile, I get all the responses. And then, <laughs> and then when I, as soon as I message them about me having through palsy, I end up getting blocked or, you know, um. Or the person will get upset with me, like you should have mentioned this first. Or so I don't know. It's been like a really rocky road, but I will share my experience. One time, um, I did go out and um, meet this guy for a date one time, and I went from Brooklyn to Harlem, and you know we sat and we talked, and you know I told him about me having cerebral palsy, and he oh boy. He was pissed off with me, let me tell you. I don't know if he was pissed because, you know, I feel like his ego was bruised pretty much because after I went home, it's like, you know, I really, I didn't mean to, but it's like I kind of ghosted him to pretty much after that. After the day, I really wasn't interested. And I didn't know I, at the time, and I was wrong for that too. I didn't know I, at the time how to express that. So I just like ignored and he was like texting me and he kept saying like, you know, he was texting me random things. And then, and then I just, I, you know, I, I thought I responded, but I didn't. And then I just left it alone. And then I guess after he realized I wasn't responding, he was like, oh, he said, sorry, this is not going to work. You should tell people you have to palsy up front and don't be. <laughs> and like he went and long, wrote this long message and then, and then I should have just left it alone, like my friend told me at the time, because, but I responded back, and then we was going back and forth for a little bit, and I just actually blocked him. If you are looking for someone, and you are looking to be in a relationship, you deserve to be loved, you deserve to be appreciated, you deserve respect, you deserve to have the right to demand that someone ask you for permission before they do anything to you or with you. You have to open yourself up to that and truly believe that you deserve it. And the other, the other thing I say all the time is when you're doing what you love, you'll find those people. And the person for you doesn't always come in the form that you think they're gonna come in. If I could ever speak anything into you, it would be that you absolutely deserve to be respected, you deserve to have your needs met. You deserve to not have to answer stupid questions about your disability because Google yeah. is free. Let me tell y'all something about Google. That shit been free <laughs> since y'all motherfuckers was in diapers. The shit been free. Use it and educate mm -hmm. yourself. And if you do have a question, be respectful. I say that of all my guests. You want to slide in my DMs, be respectful. Even though I can, I can fucking handle you, be respectful. But if you're going to slide in Chaz's DMs, be respectful. That's all I ask. Be respectful. Be it for, you know, you want to be his friend. It's a business thing. You want to date him. Whatever it is, be respectful. Mm -hmm.
But there was a story out um, a couple months back about this guy and he was sexually assaulting people that he met off of those dating apps. And I mean, yo, it was insane, man. Like one of the, the people he assaulted was um, was actually disabled in like a whole like amputee. You know what I'm saying? And, and he, st he stole like, their crutches and, and they, oh, they, you know, that they needed an order of walk. He left the guy out in the cold. Like, I mean, you know, it's really, really brutal and rough out there. And, and I want you to just give people some tips on dating and, and how to be careful and, and just in navigating in this crazy, crazy, brutal world that we live in. I don't know, especially today. I feel like, you know, there was some things, there was some risks I definitely took that I was like, what, like pretty much like, you know, like looking back, I was like, I have probably put myself in some dangerous situations. But, you know, um, like now in my 30s, <laughs> tips, I would say, I don't know. So, but tip number one, always meet in public. Like, always meet in public. Um, <laughs> like, I don't know. As far as, like, right now, I'm, like, 30 years old. I have my own place. I don't let anybody up in the end. Like, it's, like, that's one of my biggest fears now. It's, like, just to, like, and your place is nice, too. Like, everybody don't need to know where you live, and they don't need to know how nice your place is. And they don't even know none of that shit. Yeah, so it's and like plus you don't want their bed box. Yeah, oh yeah, that's true. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah, for real. I Yo, mean, but seriously. Yeah, like that. I think I don't know. Like that's the tip. Always meet in public. Like just, just be, just be careful. Be safe. Just be extra cautious and go with your instinct. If you feel something is wrong. Go with your gut feeling because nine times out of ten, and I say nine times out of ten, because your gut is really your intuition, whatever you want to call it, God calling, God <laughs> whispering in the air, whatever. That go with that because there's yeah, I'll say that much. But yeah, meet in public and go with your gut. That's what I say. And don't let everybody in your house take the steps. Like, you know, now where I am in my life, like hooking up, none of that means anything to me. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't want to. Right. <laughs> and and you, you have to be safe. And I mean, you know, there, there are red flags everywhere. I mean, what are some of the red flags that you notice that, that you like to tell people to look out for? I would say, like, eagerness. Like, if they seem overly helpful, like, I had a guy tell me, like, oh, yeah. Tia, I would drive you to go get your furniture. Like, dude, you don't even know me. You don't know the first thing about me. So that's a red flag. If they helpful, because listen, ain't, ain't nobody in this world that damn friendly. <laughs> like they either want something or trying to, you know, I'll say that that's a red flag. Um, Y'all heard what he said. I heard what he said. <laughs> ain't just nobody say, in yeah. this world that damn friendly. Yeah. <laughs> For real. And I say that, and I'm, I'm pretty sure there's other red flags, but I can't even think about it right now. But um, yeah, I would say that that's pretty much number one. Yeah. That's a big one. I'll share one too. If and and you already said this, and I'll just reiterate it. I mean, if you feel it in your gut that something ain't right, it's not right. I think a yeah. lot of times what we do is 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 humans, we gaslight ourselves. Like yeah. we know something isn't right, yet we still keep. Tell it, trying to tell ourselves and convince ourselves it's fine. Oh, 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 it'll be fine. It's okay. It's not that deep. We do a lot of that. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of that. And I think we need to just pay attention to our gut. We've all been given that instinct and that discernment. And we need to, you know, really use that and and pay attention to it, you know? Yeah. Um, definitely. Not everyone perceives you the same way. And that goes for people living with real quality because I had people look at me and they haven't they haven't seen me for my disability. They, like there's some people who say that, you know, my friends have told me this before, like, you know, Chaz, you don't always limp. And I find that very interesting because I thought like every time I walk, I limp. But there's times that, you know, my disability isn't noticeable. 
like physically and that uh, not, not showing any indication of limping. And that's why I always wonder why in the past, like where I met people and, and then eight months later, they'd be like, Chaz, what's wrong with you? Why are you walking like that? And I'm like, I always walk like this. And I'm like, I have reports like, for real, we never know this. So it's like always interesting on how people perceive you. <laughs> yeah. And on that dating aspect, I had to add too that um, sometimes I've been on on dates and like guys would literally say like they would look at me and they say like their first like first thing that comes to mind is like oh I'm gonna have to take care of him like in the like pretty much and I don't need nobody to take care of me which is great because I work a full time job I got my own I do my own food shopping but even though all that is a task like everything from doing laundry is on food shopping that's all a task but that's what I want to say but what would you tell somebody who was interested in you what would you tell them to do you know what I'm saying like you don't want to be taken care of you're not a baby you know what I'm saying you, you yeah. can, I mean what, what would you ask for would it be that you you want them to be supportive I mean I, that's what anybody should be but I mean what yeah. would you what would you ask them all I ask is that they just be like, um, you know, just understanding knowledge rule of me, not like so much needing support. Just, you know, speak with me, communicate with me, ask me what I need. Don't feel like you're obligated or like you necessary, like like you have to be my aid and everything. And I, I say that to my friends too, because I had my friends been so supportive, so sweet, so like nice. I had a friend tie my shoe once and I, and I had to tell my friend, I'm like, you're not my aid. It's okay, I can do this, like, you know. But it's like, you know, they perceive me that way and they, you know, and I, like to me, I'm the, I was an inspiration, you know, they like, but Chaz, you know, we see you do all this by yourself, man. And I'm like, yeah, this is a lot to do by myself without the support of my family. And it's like, you know, like, I'm like, no, I'm good. I got this. Like, I'm just like so independent, like that way. And I'm just like, and pretty that's the Taurus in me too. I'm stubborn. I don't like to ask for help. And, you know, <laughs> so it's like I, I would push myself, this. but I'm learning not to push myself so hard because I have to yeah. realize, even though I live my life like I don't have cerebral palsy, I have to say to myself, like, okay, cerebral, you are not cerebral palsy, but cerebral palsy is a part of you. <laughs> and you have to be knowledgeable of that. So it's a thing every day. And I like this thing I saw on Instagram. It was from, um, I don't know what was the page, but it said no one's like pretty much on along the lines of no one's the expert, but you, not your mother, not the doctor, not like, you know, <laughs> they said no you know one's what's the best expert, for you. the disability of you living with cerebral palsy, but you, you're the expert. Like, and I had to, and I had to, like, when I read that, I was like, finally, like, I said, yeah, you know what, you're right. Like, no one's the expert. I'm the expert. Like, right. You know, only I know what's best for me and what's for everybody. It's like, you know, I'm still learning. I still got to do things that's best for me. And I think it's hard to, like, especially because I was the youngest, the last born. So I think a lot of times when my family suggests stuff, they just see me as little Chaz, the baby. But it's like, I'm a grown ass man. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm a grown ass man. Especially now I got this apartment. You can't. <laughs> hey, exactly. Ain't nobody exactly. paying me this rent. Ain't nobody paying this rent. Exactly. Yeah, you got to make your own decisions. And you live with yourself 24 7. One of the things yeah. I always say, you live with yourself 24 7. You know how you feel when you wake up in the morning. You know how you feel when you go to bed at night. You know how you feel throughout the day. So, Whatever decision you make, it has to make you happy all day long because you got to live with it. And then when you go home and you get in your bed and you go to sleep, you got to sleep with that shit. Mm -hmm. They don't. So they can say shit all day long. Like I've had people, yo, I've had people say things to me about what direction I should take my show in. And I've had to tell them, I'm not doing that. Because I know where I want to go with my show. And I know what I'm going to do with my show. It's not what you want to do. It's what I want to do. And if I take something into that direction, I'm going to have to live with it. But I'd rather mm -hmm. live with the decision that I made in confidence 
and me knowing that that was what I wanted to do in my heart and in my mind in something that I can live with. So you know what's best for you. Yeah, that's you true. Do. Remember, yeah. People make su suggestions all day, but you know what's best for you. But before we wrap up, I ask all my guests this. Um, if you had a time machine, what would you go back and tell yourself in the past? Oh, I thought about this a lot. I would tell myself. So you've been watching my show. Yeah, Clap I it up for Chaz yeah, for watching my show. Clap yeah, it up. That's... Clap it up. Clap it up. Yeah. Clap it up. <laughs> yeah, you see me crying too when I asked uh, Chandra Smith that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, she made me cry. Listen, I mean, she, hey, that, I felt that. I, I needed to hear what she said, you know, and uh, I'm not ashamed of it at all. But yeah, what would you tell yourself in the past if you had that time machine that Chandra is probably going to build for all of us, by the way, with all of her uh, her uh, formulas and, and, and things that she has going on? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, that would be amazing. I, was, I would think about that too all the time, like going back in the past, like what I told my, my younger self. And I was pretty much telling myself, like, to um, speak, speak your truth, speak up. Like, you have things to say in this world, and people, people are interested in you. People want to hear what you have to say. And you are, you are worthy. You are worth, you are worth, you are, you are worthy. You're worth it. And, um, you know, always believe in yourself because you just don't know where you can go in life. Like, I like to look back especially all the things I went through growing up in my childhood, I would never thought like I would be here, like, you know, having a like full-time job, like being able to work and provide for myself, having an apartment, a one bedroom apartment to myself, like that. I, and something that I did for myself, I had no caseworkers. So I was just telling myself, you're worthy, speak up, use your voice. You know, because you know, I've always been a shy kid. I never wanted to say too much. I never said what's on my mind. I never expressed myself because I always worried what other people thought or said. And uh, like as I get older, I just, I just don't, uh, I'm going to say, I just don't give a fuck. <laughs> Y'all heard what he said, right? He just don't give a fuck. <laughs> he just don't give a fuck. And neither do I. Yeah. This is probably one of the things that really have bothered me throughout life is the unknown, like not really knowing the truth about what, how, you know, I was born with cerebral palsy, but this is what I think it was. I know my mom talked to me about it. I know she, she told me her side, like, you know, she been, she was having a lot of cramping and she went to Harlem hospital, you know, and she was sent back home. You know, because doctors kept saying it was too early. So this is, I was born um, six months premature. So I was born at six months, yeah. So my mom was having cramping. She went to Harlem Hospital. They kept sitting at her home. That's what my, um, from my mom's point of view. But, uh, you know, um, they say, like the medical documents, they say um, most kids are born with cerebral palsy is either before or during childbirth is due to a lack of oxygen to the brain. So that's where the, the brain damage comes to play and things of that nature. So she was going into labor with you at six months. Yeah, like I think yeah, that's pretty much it was what it was. Like I think I was ready to come out and I think they were telling her like, you know, it was too early and sending her back home. And you gotta think too, I was born in 1990. So back then, there wasn't an, like all this information about cerebral palsy that we have now. Because when I was born, they told my mom, I was not gonna be teachable. <laughs> I was not gonna be able to walk. They, um, they was like, I was pretty much that I was gonna be like a vegetable. I feel like I lived a very normal, normal childhood. Like, you know, normal childhood, like I was very active. Like, I think I didn't realize that I had a disability until, like, pretty much high school, until I actually was walking down the street and I looked. Like, you know how they have those long mirrors on the window? And I looked and I was like, wow, this is how I walk? Like, I never realized it. 
because nobody ever made like a no like students never like tease me kid young kids never tease me um I pretty much wasn't bullied throughout my whole entire life so it was like growing up was interesting like and I didn't really felt like everything I did I, I never felt like I really had a struggle especially like as a child a child until I noticed that I have CP that's why I felt like I started realizing things about myself you know and in adulthood it's like now I'm realizing more it's like okay this is what it is <laughs> this is what I was going through as a child but I just never saw it that way because I don't, I don't think as a kid you don't have that mindset like you, you're disabled so you're different from others because I was you know doing everything else as kids except for I never really learned how to ride a bike <laughs> And I Me just neither. thought, like, I was just hey. one of those kids that was going to be like, But I tried. But, yeah. But I remember as a kid that I did notice something, but I never really told anybody about this. I noticed as a kid, I used to run. I used to run. I used to love running. And then I, ever since this day, it happened to me. I used to run. And one day I was running. And all of a sudden, I just felt something in my back. Like, you know, I just, like, lost like I was running and it felt like I just lost control of my body and like lost feeling in my legs. And I just fell to the ground. <laughs> and I was like, in that moment, I was just like, okay, I just thought maybe, maybe I shouldn't run. Maybe this is doing harm to my body, which now as an adult, I learned that I'm not supposed to run because due to my hip subluxation, which I talked about earlier, because my hip is like, like pretty much dislocated form. It's like every time I run, it's like I'm doing harm to my body. So I try not to run as often, but you better believe if some shit pop off, I'm running. Cause that's a lot of people say, they was like, Chaz, when you run, it don't even look like you got a disability. <laughs> yo, yo. Unless some shit pop off, I'm out, I don't care. Speaking <laughs> speak, speak of Harlem, you remind me of that scene from from the show Harlem, where she's running down the street. Oh yeah, you know you know the part I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Listen, we black folks. Don't be fooled. <laughs> Don't let the light skin fool you. We black. We black. Yeah. We see somebody running. We running too. Yeah. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. Um, what did your parents say though when you told them you said, "Yo, I want to. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to be a photographer." What did they say about that? Um, I would say in the beginning, like I don't know. I think I don't know. To be honest, I think my parents were probably even shocked that I made it to that level. Like I think I was shocked too. Like you know that I was like, "I'm going to college." Like because I thought for me, like high school was going to be it. Because, you know, all through all my education, it was just like, it was like a struggle. And I was always fighting to prove myself, too. Because especially, oh, I didn't mention this before, but like, you know, some people like myself, if you have um, brain damage and you know, you also develop a size real palsy, you also have like learning disabilities. So um, I was very like insecure, like going to school because I felt like that's... That's one thing I do remember as a kid when I was super, it wasn't so much my cerebral palsy that affected me. It was the fact that I knew that I learned different from other kids. And it was like, I always fought to prove myself more. And I always went to my, um, you know, my parents, like, you know, I was with my mom to help me with my homework and stuff, like, you know, looking for her to help. But I felt like it, when I was younger, my parents wasn't so involved in my education, like, you know, pretty much because they felt like I was a good kid and, you know, my teachers never complained about me, so they had no excuse. But I always I always felt like I struggled in school. Like, there's certain things that I, like, couldn't do. It's even to this day, like, um, and it's probably for most people, too, math. Like, I can't, mental math, oh, forget about it. I can't do no, don't ask me to add or subtract nothing in my head. Because no, no, that is right there. Like no, but you know that I'm glad you say that because in in all the parents out here, you know, um, you know, pay attention to your kids. You know, no, no matter if they're the good kid, the bad kid, you don't hear from their teachers. You know, talk to your kids and and find out you know what they're struggling with or 
how they feel about things. You know, just mm -hmm. talk to them about that stuff. That's very important. But I'll say this about math, though. I didn't get math till I was a lot older because, um, you know, I used to teach. And when I was teaching, I had to take a test in order to prove that I could teach subjects. So one of the um, tests was a math test. And when I said, and I was, you know, in my 20s, and when I sat down and I was like, man, you know what? Math is actually just logic. And yeah. I'm a pretty logical person. So when I just dis figured, you like, oh, okay, I can just apply the logic that I already have to these problems, I can do well. And I actually passed the math section of that test with like, um, I don't remember the score. It was, I guess, the equivalent of like a, a, a A minus or something like that. Because it's just really, you know, it's just logic. You know what I'm saying? Like, once I did that, I was cool. You know what I'm saying? Um, but what was it like, though, growing up in the hood? Because we're both from the hood. Um, what was it like growing up in the hood with, with CP? Growing up in the hood, CP, <laughs> that's very interesting because it was like, it was like, it was, <laughs> it's, it's funny to me because I'm like, and like that, like if I go back to with the hood that I grew up, everybody like, oh my god, Chaz, how are you? Like it'd be like the the the, the thuggest dudes, like the guys that's in the gang and all this other stuff that people would say. But they was like so protective of me and my family. Like I think it's a fact that I don't know. People in the hood is different. It's like it's like that sense of community. Like it's like they were protective of me. I felt like people looked out for me. And my mother, like, like they never took advantage of my family. And I think it was a lot because not only I was this kid with CP, I was, like, this kid that was seen by the hood, like, this sweetheart that didn't let nothing stop him. So it's like, wow, this kid is, like... You were an inspirational figure. Yeah, so it was just, like, growing up, it's, like, I never fear. It, it, was, it was definitely struggles and definitely, like, scary moments and stuff, but... Like, I never felt like people were trying to take advantage of me. If anything, I felt like everybody like, looked out for me. I didn't think, like, you know, me living in the hood, the hood like, it was just normal to me. That's what we going back do. to. Um, we never do. <laughs> yeah, going back to um the, what was it, the show, Sunny Love Special, and you said yeah. that something about the guy, the cat, main character being white. I said, yes. Is that because, um you know, us, Black kids with cerebral palsy, we definitely have a whole different story <laughs> to tell. Like, you know, and it was so growing up too. I had um, it was a girl that I knew that she had she had CP, but it was weird. I think she had like um, I don't think she had like a walk. I know she walked like I don't know what if we had the same type, but I noticed she walked different than me. Like it was like for me. It, from my point of view, it looked like she struggled a lot more than me. But, you know, what's crazy about cerebral palsy is you compare to, like, you know, people look at me like I have a mouth form and then some people have a severe form. But people with a uh, severe type of cerebral palsy can do things that I can't do to this day, like flip from monkey bars and stuff. And I've seen people on TikTok that struggle and have walking devices. But they could drive. They could drive a hell of a lot of car, and I I'm scared to drive out of a, a drive a car because I'm like I feel like I'm gonna lose control of my body. But here these people they got like hand controls and all this adaptive devices, and I'm like, and they whipping that car. Yo, and do you know? Do you know who Trey Nub is? Do you know about Trey Nub? He's a rapper. He plays drums. He's like a drumming instructor actually, and. Nub, his, they call him Nub. You know, like, that's what he wants you to call him. Like, we're not making fun of him by calling him Nub. He be driving. He be cooking. He be playing drums, shooting basketball, doing backflips. Like, he's just, like, a total inspiration. When you have determination and you have willpower, no matter what it is that you're dealing with, disability, be it physical or mental, you can overcome and accomplish anything. I mean, seriously, it doesn't matter. It's, it's April. People getting married in May, June, and 
July, you know what I'm saying? They, you know, they're going to need a photographer for their weddings. You know, yeah. maybe people need a photographer for um, baby showers, proms. You know, it's that season. So yeah. hit Chaz up and check out his photography mm-hmm. because he does very good photography. He will make you look like the true essence of who you are in his photography. So make sure you guys hit him up and, and do that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love I love doing head headshots and everything the most. I Wait a minute now, how come that. you didn't tell me that when I needed a photographer to do my picture, even though I had a great I know I was thinking about that when picture, I was thinking if but, you need any, yeah, if you need any promotion of shit, hit me up. Oh, I know. what the hell, man? It's all I good know. though, because I mean, you know what that picture I, I got a good picture out of that shoe and I already returned that jacket. So I mean shit, what can I say? You know, I'm from the hood. I'm from the hood. What do y'all want from me? That jacket was expensive. I returned that jacket. That jacket is back in, in, in a, at the distribution center. So <laughs> just say it. Tell people how they can get in touch with you. Chaz Bedford. Yeah, that's it. Chaz Bedford. So that's C H A Z b e d f o r d bedford like bedford avenue in brooklyn bedford like bedford stuyvesant make sure it's c h a z and not c h a s because if you type in c h a s you'd be surprised how many people make that i know they do just like they put an h in my name all the time and i blast them every show if you go to the chris david show yeah you got an h in there i don't know who the fuck that is it's not me so i can't help you know like, like I said, Chaz, Chaz is a wonderful photographer. When you hit Chaz up, be respectful in his DMs. Um, be respectful in everybody's DMs when you hit them up. Don't don't talk crazy. He's detail-oriented. He's professional. And listen, like I tell you guys all the time, get at him before the price goes. Chaz, thank you for coming and sharing with us here at the Chris David Show. I really appreciate it. No, um, thank you for having me. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Therapeutic for me. That's yes. <laughs> Listen, this is therapeutic for me because I mean, you know, I get to talk to great people like you. I learn from you all. I learn from you guys, you know, and these are stories and these are things that I wanted to see because I wasn't seeing them anywhere else. And that was the whole point of me doing the show was so that not only I could I watch what I wanted to watch and see what, who, who I wanted to see. But also, I wanted to fill in a void that was out there because nobody's doing what I'm doing. Yeah. And you know this. You know, you know how YouTube is. You know how podcasters are. Nobody's doing this. And even if they do, it's not me. I want to thank you for listening and watching. Tell your friends, tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your baby daddy, tell your boyfriend, tell your sister, tell your cat, tell your dog, <laughs> tell your doctor. Listen. Tell everybody living with CP, all the CP warriors, to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Chris David TV. To follow our show at the Chris David Show on Instagram and YouTube. You can also visit ChrisDavidShow.com where you'll find everything you need to know about the show. And that's Chris with the C, no H. Y'all be kind and be well.